Hello, hello! David Snowpick here from Snowpick Games. Welcome to the stream. Uh, welcome to Ash, who's got a orc with a beard and a big axe and a witch's hat. And uh, I guess the, the jester shirt. That's like really an amalgamation of a lot of different things all, all uh, scrunched together. <laughs> How is everybody doing? How are your uh, folks' projects going? Playing anything cool? I actually have not been playing a lot of video games lately. I think I said the same thing on the last stream, but it was true then too. I played a little bit of Dome Keeper this week, which is a, a pretty addictive but like stressful game. <laughs> You're like uh, uh, balancing your time between like gathering resources in this underground area and then battling the baddies up here. And b there's like a timer until the baddies come back. And you know, as video games are, they get stronger and stronger every time. And it makes me feel like every second counts and I must make my little character take all the best routes and all of these things. And it really stresses me out. So I can play it. I can play it about once a day, <laughs> but it's a really great game. Tcha! I am not familiar with that game. Ash just finished Tcha. Hey, Ricardo, welcome to the stream. You kind of look like a firefighter, although I know this is supposed to be like medieval characters where they would not have a firefighter with like a kind of classic firefighter looking hat, but you do. I'm going to look up what uh, what Tacha is. Oh, I think I have actually heard of this. Uh, I remember seeing a trailer for it in a... Um, like a showcase of some kind where they were showing a whole bunch of different trailers. The name just didn't stick with me uh, because I guess I just don't have a, a, a place for that name in my mind. Maybe after I played the game and got a feel for this world, it would it would stick better. But yeah, this, uh, this one did look cool. Very relaxing, complete opposite. Yeah, I need, I need a chill, relaxing game. Does it play on the Steam Deck? Or I guess I should for Deck, not Steam. It does not say so, but a lot of games do, even if they uh, don't report it. I guess we can check for controller support. Full controller support! Yeah, I'll give it a try. I, I've been playing most Steam games, except for VR games, on the Steam Deck, so I can get away from my computer, ever. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm trapped in this room all of the time. I do all of my work in here. I, uh, you know, do all of my recreational programming and game creation, all my hobby stuff. I play games in here. I, like, never leave this spot. Uh, so the deck is great, because then I can go sit in just another room. Just a different, a different room that I'm also trapped in, but it's not the same room, so it's better. <laughs> Oh, it's a, a Epic PS Store exclusive. Interesting. So then this this is just a coming soon kind of page. It is. All right. We'll wishlist it. It is being wishlisted. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I do have a PS4, uh, but I have not played it in so long. Well, when, when the PS5 came out, I wanted a PS5 so bad. I was like, I'm always late to every console generation. I'm going to get the PS5 right away. And then they were impossible to get, and so I didn't get one. I tried solid for like a year, and then I kind of like casually sort of tried, air quotes. And then I saw that you could just go on Amazon and buy an Xbox uh, without any like hullabaloo. So I went on Amazon and I bought an Xbox. I've been playing uh, mostly on, on the Xbox Series S that we that we have, and it's completely supplanted the PlayStation. The PlayStation's gathering dust. None of the controllers are charged. It's a whole ordeal if you want to try and play on it. Go sit outside to play games. That's interesting. I've really, I've really never done that. Like I've taken the Steam Deck uh, on a plane, an airport. Uh, but yeah, I haven't tried. I haven't tried playing it outside. The deck is nice. Like it's not uh, like when games don't support it very well. It's a pain, and um, it doesn't have the best performance or graphics or whatever. But it is. It is just nice. It is just nice to have my PC games away from here. <sighs> oh, geez. You paid 1500 for a scalper PS5? Crazy. Yeah, I mean, I guess like, so I've been in the PlayStation side 
for for quite a while because I had the PS3 and 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 PS4 and like I I didn't own a PS2 but like my roommate did at the time and my buddy uh, had a PS1 that we played when I go over to visit his house. Um, so like I was definitely on the PlayStation side of the camp until they just the PlayStation Five was so hard to get. I would have gotten one. I would have gotten one right away. Anyway, um, yeah. Otherwise, not that much has been going on with me other than, I mean, I'm super excited for Godot 4.1 to release. It looks like it's probably going to release next week. Yay! And all of the stuff that uh, we did on GD Extension over the, the last bunch of months, we meaning like the GD Extension team and, and the other, you know, contributors and stuff making, making patches and issues and all of that. Uh, GD extension in 4.1 is going to be way more serviceable than it was in 4.0. Um, there's still a ton of work to do, like really a ton. Uh, but we've gotten it to sort of like it, it works and covers like a whole bunch of use cases that it didn't before. And that's great. <laughs> Wrist tattoos of Wasad on the left and the PlayStation icons on the right. That is badass. <laughs> Um, yeah, so today I just figured we would work on, I have like a list of, let me find where my, where's my Godot contributor to do list. Uh, I have a list of stuff that I want to do for a GD extension. Most of it, like not that difficult. Uh, but I don't know, everything takes time, right? And then um, I've kind of fallen behind the last week or two on just reviewing people's PRs and checking out issues and validating stuff. And so I kind of figured we'd just work on those things today. Um, so not like a big uh, thing we're trying to accomplish, but like hopefully we'll do a couple of little things and, and uh, advance the state of GD extension. Nothing that we're going to do today is going to end up in 4.1. Uh, because like I said, it's coming out probably next week. Um, and uh, at this point, really only like critical earth shattering bugs are going to be merged. Uh, so this is all stuff that will end up eventually in 4.2. 4.2, I think, is going to be even better than 4.1 on every uh, uh, facet, not just GD extension. Um, with with 4.1, I feel like we, there's supposed to be this four-month release cycle. Um, I feel like we kind of only had three months <laughs> to do 4.1 because uh, after 4.0 came out, like it was so exhausting for so many contributors to get to Godot 4.0 that a lot of people just like took a month off, just like stopped contributing to Godot for like a month um, and then, you know, kind of slowly came back to it. So we, we had a little bit less time, I think, for 4.1 than we will have for 4.2. Also, with 4.2, like a whole bunch of teams have uh, finally gotten themselves like really organized. Um, am, is my voice clipping? It sounds kind of like I'm clipping in, um, in, my, in, in my headset. Do you guys hear some clipping? Hey, Elliot, welcome to the stream. Rocking the jester hat and an orc. That's awesome. How are things by you, man? I'm just I'm just gonna turn something down over here. Maybe just turn the gain on my preamp down a little bit. Although it's going to the compressor, so that really shouldn't matter that much. Maybe what I should turn down is the line in where I'm recording. I'm just gonna turn it down just like a touchiest touch of a touch. Okay. I don't know if I was clipping. It still kind of sounds like I am. <laughs> but also, I'm hearing a different audio than you guys are hearing because I have like a different mix going to the headphones right from the little tiny mixing board that I have over here uh, than what's actually going into the computer. So maybe you guys aren't hearing that. Oh, you're rocking Connecticut. Max need to come out here and airlines are whacked. <laughs> Just said the Gino road trip. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Hey, Bastian, welcome to the stream. Yeah, you need to get your sleep, man. <laughs> what time is it over there? Jacobson42, welcome to the stream, saying no clip. That is fantastic. I'm glad that I'm not clipping through uh, over on the stream. I'm still kind of clipping on my headphones, which is going to annoy me, but it's fine. Uh, Ash is disappointed that this particular issue did not make it into 4.1. Let me Let me get that up. Let's take a look at it. Just past midnight? Okay, it's so not, not that bad. 
at the uh, uh, last GD extension meeting, we had Fabio up to uh, the meeting started at 2 a.m. his time, and we were, went a little bit over, like 3.15 <laughs> for him. Allow controlling fog intensity with traditional start and distance and a curve in Godot 4. This definitely sounds like the kind of stuff that Cubiche is working on lately. Uh, um, so this is an issue. I feel like, oh, I took the whole thing over here. I meant to, this should have stayed over there. Uh, uh, the, the curse of having this many screens. Let me see if I can make this happen without exploding everything. Ah, it worked. Okay. <laughs> Never watched this over Facebook before. Yeah, after coming back from a night out crazy. <laughs> yeah, and he was like, oh, I just got back from the bar, and then he's going to do uh, a <laughs> GD accession meeting. Okay, so uh, I'm glad the watch properties made it in for... Okay, so this is a proposal, and this is controlling uh, fog based on distance and a curve. These These screenshots look really cool. Um, improved implementation needs to be reworked. Oh, so there's an implementation PR. Add optional fog depth to environment. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think what's going to happen once 4.1 is released is just like a ton of PRs are going to get merged <laughs> just right away to get things going for the next uh, the next release. I've, I've been this this release cycle is really good. Um, I. There was a point, kind of like a month and a half ago, where I thought, this is too short, we're never going to get all the things we need to get in. And then we kind of just managed to get the last bunch of GD extension things in, and it seemed like, I don't know, the GD script folks got a whole bunch of good things in, and then it was just kind of chill. Um, yeah, like all this rendering stuff, I'm I'm not uh, good at rendering. I've, I've done a bunch of things on the OpenGL renderer, uh, because I felt like I had to, like if I didn't do it, no one else was going to do it because I needed it specifically for, for WebXR. Uh, but like, I probably shouldn't be allowed to touch rendering code because I just, I'm such a novice <laughs> when it comes to rendering. I do my, my best, <laughs> try to fake it a little bit. Um, yeah. Last thing it says, really like the new release cycle system. Yes, you can get worked up the repeat on another form of the next release. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, 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 the the release the release cycle thing is working out great like and the fact that we even kind of like i don't know it just went so good on the first time we're trying it um i'm very hopeful for the next bunch of tries and as i was saying earlier i feel like the for 4.1 we kind of had less time cuz right after 4.0 released everyone was exhausted and a lot of people took a month off but then also like a lot of teams kind of needed to get organized like the gd extension team uh we kind of like refigured out what we're doing and and had to settle a whole bunch of I don't know, kind of high level questions in the beginning. So like there was like a month off and then there was like a month of trying to figure out like, how are we going to be a team uh, again? And then like, you know, that just left a tiny bit of time to actually like really get things done. But we, we got a ton done. And then I know the physics team is getting ramped up and the GD script team like got all their, their, you know, rocking, they're firing on all cylinders now. And I think 4.2 is going to be amazing because everyone's just, just kicking ass. <laughs> Bastian says you underestimate your skills in rendering. Yeah, maybe by like the slightest possible amount. But uh, I don't know. There was like that sky issue where like after you found the problem, I was like, oh man, I should have I should have realized this was bad before before I even made the original PR. And then well, anyway, I I I I do what I can and then ask you and Clay for review. <laughs> <laughs> which usually solves uh, uh, many problems. Oh, I didn't see Ricardo sneak in. Ricardo, oh no, I did see Ricardo. Never mind, because you have the fire hel helmet thing going. Andreas, welcome to the stream. You've got a centurion helmet and some long braids. You're looking good, my friend. All right, so uh, yeah, what I was saying earlier is I just kind of want to work on like some little things from my to-do list for GD extension stuff. Uh, maybe look at some PRs, do a little bit of PR review, um, and just kind of do some little stuff advancing GD extension forward. <laughs> Making mistakes is part of the learning journey. That's absolutely true, Bastian. Yeah, you're you're one hundred percent right about that. Um, yeah. So, uh, da, 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 da. oh, I was just 
adding, cross-referencing some issues over here. I, I worked uh, earlier this week on adding callable MP and callable MP static to uh, Godot CPP. Uh, it, it, it turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. We discussed it at a GD extension meeting, not the last meeting, but the one before. And I was convinced like, this is going to, we're going to have to do like all the same work we have to do to do like a, a method bind in order to do callable MP. Um, but then like I started digging into it and it turned out to be a, a lot, lot simpler, uh, than I had thought. The hard part really, like the stuff on the Godot side is super simple. The hard part really was like all the template junk that needed to go into the Godot CPP side. Um, like I love that C++ has metaprogramming. Like if it didn't have metaprogramming, it would be way more limited and we'd have to be using like code generators or something. Uh, but like templates are the worst way to do metaprogramming, just the worst. Like they're they're sort of well suited to making containers like vectors or linked lists or whatever with like an optional type but like for anything else any other possible use of metaprogramming templates are just the worst and like i can sort of picture in my brain like the kind of shape of the assembly that i want to happen for this uh i don't actually know x86 assembly but like i know 6502 and z80 assembly so i can sort of picture like kind of like my vague idea of like what i want to happen here um but like what you, the junk you have to do in c++ to get there is just so annoying so yeah all these templates <laughs> a template wizard now no i'm a i'm a template basher with a hammer and i hit it until it does what i want eventually <laughs> And like another sign that it's a terrible metaprogramming language is that the errors never make any sense. So I, I don't actually know uh, uh, Rust, but like looking at the way that they do metaprogramming, like they have a whole separate little like sub language for like doing macros. And that just seems so much more logical than trying to cram things into these templates. And then you get like this, like two screens full of junk from GCC. And it turns out you needed to put const somewhere you didn't have const, but there's no way like you can see that. Anyway, moving on, moving on. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me take a peek at my list. Um, oh, I was gonna put this little, this little link in here just so I can find my way back here later. Um, I guess I'll use this link. Take a look at my to-do list, um, and we may also take a peek at some issues. I saw that Fabio uh, posted uh, a PR adding a test to Godot CPP uh, shortly before the stream started. So I think I would kind of like to check that out, uh, review his PR, and um, I thought I had like a waiting for review section. Uh -huh. Okay, I guess I will need to make a waiting for review section. Um, Nope, nope. What's going on? All right, waiting for review. But yeah, some things on my list. Uh, adding string resize to get OCPP. Uh, this was something that Bruvsg, I have no idea how he wants people to say that username, but I'm going to say it as Bruvsg, uh, <laughs> brought up uh, the, the text server advanced module in Godot core can actually be compiled as a GD extension optionally, uh, which is great. Uh, in that it catches a lot of things that modules can do that that um, Godot CPP can't do but should do. Uh, so that was one of the things that came up. The other thing that came up was something I already made the PR for, which was adding a, a full implementation of of uh, char string. Which I don't know why I didn't put that on the notes for the last GD extension meeting. I'll I'll have to remember to add that. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, PRs that contributors did where I feel like it should be done a slightly different way and I want to make an alternate PR to demonstrate to them the other way. Uh, this one, uh, the implementation is great uh, and it works, but um, we discussed at one of the GD extension meetings that the implementation should be in a different place. It just should be put in a different file. Um, and the contributor, I guess, we suggested that and they kind of said, no, I think my way is better. <laughs> So I, I want to uh, take a stab at, at doing it the, the other way and, and kind of see what happens. Um, what else? Oh, there was a bunch of tests that I had uh, that I wanted to write for some bugs that we already fixed. Uh, we didn't used to have this, this automated test suite. Uh, we do now. 
Uh, so some bugs that were fixed kind of before we had the test suite, I would like to add some, some tests. Uh, this we're not going to do on stream, but I think we should have somewhere like an upgrading GD extension for Godot 4.1 notes somewhere. Um, and then, yeah, let's just take a quick look at what Fabio's PR was. Or was it a PR? Hmm. Hmm. I swear he did something. Something with RPCs. I'm going to have to just go take a peek at my email. Uh, how can I do that without showing all my email? Oh, Bastian's rolling. Yeah, go get some sleep, man. Thanks for, for coming. And yeah, I will see you at the XR meeting in my tonight and your tomorrow. <laughs> take care. Uh, all right, I think I can do it here. Uh, add RPC tests. OCPP. Oh, Remy merged it. <laughs> In between the time that I saw it and the stream starting, Remy merged it. Let's go uh, take a look at this. I guess we don't. I guess we don't have to do this. So, uh, Fali said some tests. They must have passed. Otherwise, Remy wouldn't have merged it. Oh, return last RPC arg. Cool. So he's testing that Godot's multiplayer RPC system is working from GD extension, which is awesome. There was someone else who made a uh, an issue or commented on an issue uh, asking if um, Godot's multiplayer RPC system worked in GD extension, and I didn't know. I was I I, I was like I'll have to research that later. Uh, but Fabio turned up uh, the wizard that he is and. Uh, said, yes, it works, and then also made a PR adding some tests proving that it works. Oh, yeah, here's the, um, here's this one. Yep, closing as we have a test example. We should actually probably still, we have, we have this plan to make like an example repo with a bunch of different examples, uh, since the tests don't really make the best example necessarily. All right, let me get back to where I can see what you guys are saying. The clean Percussive metaprogramming. <laughs> I like that. And what, oh, I missed your character. I'm just like all scatterbrained, all scatterbrained. You said your thing before Bastian's thing, and I saw his first, and now I'm going backwards in time. All right, uh, so let's maybe, let's maybe pull something from my list then. Um, uh, my list is over here. So... This one uh, is entirely in Godot CPP, which makes it an easy thing to hack on. This uh, issue will require changes in Godot itself, which is totally fine. I mean, we've done that kind of thing on stream where we had to make a Godot change and a Godot CPP change together to make a thing work. Uh, but let's do the easier one. You made me look at Rust macros. <laughs> Pattern matching seems improved from C++, but still hurts my brain. I'll stick to programming my VCR. <laughs> uh, Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to go into like a whole like uh, uh, high level discussion of metaprogramming, but it it like you do need like a separate programming lang programming language to do it. You know, like C plus plus. Let's just imagine it all as templates is is insane. Uh, all right, so this is the one we we're gonna do. Um, so. Let's grab uh, this person's code. It's 1091. Let's jump back over to where we have uh, VS Code. Grab PR 1091. Could not find it. What am I doing? What am I doing wrong here? Uh, do I have this set up to get PRs? That is the first next question. I do. Get Oh, why did I say pull? Git checkout PR 1091. There we go. Now we're on uh, 1091. And let's see. Oh, I guess I did a rebase of it. So never mind. Let's check out the PR 1091 rebase. And then let's make our own branch. 
Uh, we will name it something smart. Uh, vararg built-in vararg methods. <laughs> built-in vararg methods. All right, I'm gonna take a look at the diff again just to kind of get oriented here. So the way that this contributor uh, chose to implement it is that they are generating a new file uh, called built-in vararg methods. Ooh, we, we named our branch the same as this file. I think that means it was meant to be. Um, whereas the, the methods that it's generating all belong to classes that have their own header files already. So I think what we're gonna end up doing is uh, taking all of the logic in here uh, out of this loop, making it into its own function, and then go to the place where um, these classes header files are being generated and just call that function there rather than where we're like here looping over all of them and putting them into this separate file. Jacobson says, I'm a simple high school intro game design teacher. You guys are next level. You hurt my brain too. My friend Will Nations is so meta too. Will Nations is great. I, I don't know that I've ever actually talked to him, uh, but just looking at at uh, his PRs and, and his contributions, he does some amazing stuff. Uh, Godot contributor too, and he's wanting to implement struct types in the Godot core API as a memory efficient alternative to object. I would also like that. That would solve some problems uh, that we have with SG Physics 2D. So on was it the last stream or the stream before last? We were um, working on porting SG Physics 2D from Godot 3 to Godot 4. And I was talking about how one of the things that I wanted to do once it was ported to Godot 4 was switch away from our custom vector object, which is SG fixed vector. It's a, uh, an alternative to vector 2 uh, that uses fixed point numbers rather than floating point numbers. And I wanted to switch away from that to Godot's uh, new primitive type vector 2i, which is a vector 2 that uses integers instead of floats, uh, but that we couldn't do it actually, that it turns out we can't do it because vector 2i uses two 32-bit integers and our fixed point number format requires 64-bit integers. Um, and so what we had talked about last time was maybe making a, a proposal such that when you compile Godot with the double precision enabled, which usually just turns floats into doubles, could also turn those 32-bit integers into 64-bit integers. Um, but we wouldn't need that at all if um, if Will Nation's struct thing happened. We could declare our own uh, SG fixed vector whatever as a struct rather than an object. And I think I think we would still get the same advantages because I think the struct would uh, pass by value rather than pass by reference, uh, unless he's planning on having those pass by reference too, which would not help us at all in that case. But I, my, my uh, uh, expectation would be that a struct would pass by value and not by reference, but I'm not sure. Ricardo says, I'm trying to add Julia as a scripting language to Godot. Ah, it has interesting metaprogramming macros too. That is cool. I, I've seen a little bit about Julia, but I don't know like really anything real about it. Um, I clearly have searched the phrase Julia programming language before, and I've visited this link. It's, it's, it's purple with visitedness. But yeah, uh, I would be very interested to see what its metaprogramming looks like. Um, I don't know where I would just roll in here and see some of that <laughs> but uh uh it would be cool just to see what it looks like oh this is this is bizarre that's an interesting chunk of code it seems sort of lispy with all the opening uh parens hmm oh is this a macro for convenience, there are macro versions of the bug function, the above function, which take uh, standard function calls. So this this could be some metaprogramming going on here. Perhaps the percent one and percent two are the arguments to this uh, to this macro. Well, in any case, structs in core would be amazing indeed. Also for the physics server API. Yeah, I, I could definitely see how that would be useful there too. 
because uh, you need to be able to pass a whole bunch of information together, but you don't necessarily want to allocate an object, which is pretty heavy in Godot, uh, to do it. All right, so yeah, we need to find this function, built-in class var arg methods. Uh, that's Godot. This is Godot CPP. We need to go to binding generator. So the way that Godot CPP and all the GD extension bindings for Godot work uh, is they take this um, extension API JSON file, which describes like uh, a whole bunch of uh, information about all of the objects and their methods in Godot, and then it generates code, uh, in this case for C++, but there's also like the Python bindings, which will generate, I guess, C code that will create the Python objects, or like the Rust bindings, which I think generate actual Rust code. Um, and so we need to uh, change the way that it is generating. Well, so previously it was skipping some methods. It wasn't generating code for them, and we need to make it generate code for them based on the code that this contributor has already done. So uh, built in class var arg. And I guess I didn't really explain like what functions these are, um, but it's, it's specifically uh, on callable, being able to call call, call deferred, RPC, RPC ID, bind, and then on signal, being able to call emit, uh, which are pretty useful. Signal, I think more so. Um, but uh, still call also being able to, to, to bind. Um, yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff we need. It's part of Godot's API that Godot CPP can't do currently. OK, so first things first, we want to break this out into its own method. So I think basically starting from here, uh, you, ah, geez, is the code that is specific to just generating one method. So this will be generate built-in uh, built class var arg method. And instead of doing a loop, we need to pass in the different variables we need. Um, so I guess it looks like we need method. And I guess we'll just see what errors get flagged for us about what other things we need to pass in. Oh, and we need to pass in whatever we're adding this code to. Um, yes, yeah, so this looks like everything. And are we using tabs or spaces? Looks like spaces. What do we have down here? Spaces. Beautiful. Um, is the Go code also using spaces? Also. OK, great. Uh, and then I think we can delete, we'll delete this one. I'm going to leave this one around for a second just so I can uh, look at it to see what we might be missing. Uh, we're missing class name, class name, method. Uh, we probably need like this result uh, array that we're adding stuff to. And that might be it. So let's delete this. All right, OK, so now we have this method taking uh, the code that that contributor had previously already made. And we are going to try to drop it into the place that we want it. So I am guessing that somewhere else in the code, var arg method. Oh, okay, now we don't want this. This needs to go. Hmm. Okay, let's look at the code again. I, I, there was a, like a flag that uh, this code was checking. Uh, if is var arg, so I'm guessing somewhere in the code there is is var arg. where it's being ignored. Done in header because of the template, OK? Var arg is var arg. Uh, 
I was expecting to find some place that we were like skipping them, but it looks like I'm not seeing that. Okay, so instead we're gonna have to figure out this in some other way. What is generating the code for callable? Um, na, 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 looking for some code. Okay, so let's, I guess let's start from where is callable? Callable HPP is in so variant. This code looks totally generated. Is it generated? Yeah, this is a generated file. Edits will be will be lost. So good OCPP variant. Um, let's go back to where we were in the binding generator. And we want to look for uh Variant utility functions. Let's look, look for whatever is generating the code in the variant directory. Gen file list. Uh, okay, this looks like built in classes. It's adding it to files. Building up this big list. Oh, this looks like it's just building up a list. <laughs> okay. Let's look a little further. Generate built-in bindings. So include the OCPP variant. All right. Built-in append, built-in classes. Header guard, OCPP variant size. So it's variant size, that's like a specific file. Built-in classes. Yeah, actually let's look at um, this code he was looping over built-in classes and checking for nothing in particular beyond that, <laughs> that it has is var arg and methods. Upgrade, welcome to the stream. Yeah, you do kind of look like Frankenstein. <laughs> The hair, the hair is what does it. All right, so I think this is the I think this is the code. Constructors, methods. All right, let's look at what actually gets generated for callables. Okay, so it's putting it's putting the declaration in here, and then we need to put the templates after the class. That's what we need to do. So it's not so much skipping it as it's just not doing it. Um, let's go back to binding generator. So here we go. This this is generating all the stuff in. Or if this might just be building up a list at this point. Yeah, okay, so we're building up some lists. Um, generate built-in class header. Here we go. Generate built-in class header. And it's going through each of the headers because we're looping here, right? Yep, so this is for a particular class. We're going to generate built-in class header. And in here, we are actually generating the code. Um, so constructors, methods, members, operators, constructors, destructor, methods, string is special, more string is special, <laughs> namespace Godot. OK, so namespace Godot happens here. Um, and yeah, so we need result, append, we're going to put a new line, and then we need to loop over the methods again. Say, yeah, for method in built in methods, I guess, uh, I don't know what that variable is called here. Let's find it. Uh, members. Okay, I guess we got to do. Similar to this, we'll do this again. Uh, 
Actually, could we just put it in line? We could. We don't have to put it at the end. We could put it right in here. Um, yeah, let me look at callable. So rather than putting it all afterwards, which is totally valid, like we can do that, we could put it in line at the spot that they're actually declared. Um, is there an advantage or disadvantage to that? I mean, I guess the advantage is in the actual bindings generator Python code here, everything is more self-contained. So if our arg, it adds that in the front. Although on the other hand, it totally balloons this code for like um, a use case that doesn't need, for a, a situation that most methods don't need. So here, let's, let's go with the original plan. Um, so, if we have methods in there, and we have any varg methods, uh, we don't want to append. So, for method in there, then we need to say, if uh, method is not varg continue, that seems fine. not varg continue and then at this point is where we want to add a new line and then call the function that we just declared earlier which was like I don't know uh, I don't remember what it was uh, let's put a mark here ah. let's put a mark no a mark here there we go vim key bindings are working and try to find where we added that function. I guess we'll just ask git to show us the diff. That's an easy way to find things. Uh, generate built-in class var arg method. Go back to our mark. So generate built-in class var arg method. So we need the class name, or first we need the, the result array, the class name, and then the method. So we'll say add uh, var arg method implementations. So this sh should work. Um, let me just make sure that all these variables actually exist. I know that result and method do. Does class name exist? It does. So let's try it. Just run scans and see what happens. Uh, okay, this built-in var arg methods no longer exists. Something must be putting in the code. However, uh, it seems like our generation just happened. We can ignore the compile time errors for a moment. Go look at callable HPP. Hey, there we go. Um, and I think we need to not have this many spaces at the end, so we can change that. That'll be easy. Let's go to the da, 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 da. Um, binding generator, our method here. Let's jump down to it. It is... Where does it start? It starts with variant args. Uh, hang on, let me look at the space again. Is it just after that first one? Because then it means it's a space at the end we need to prevent. Yeah, so it's a space at the end we need to prevent. Hey, Wenfrey, welcome to the stream! Got a Centaurian helmet. Looks like some plate armor. Looking good there. Yeah, I always worry that like the things, the specific things I pick to work on are too boring. But then like, I don't know, what is exciting GD extension maintenance? <laughs> Hopefully this isn't too boring. Um, everyone has gotten quite, quite quiet, which always makes me worry. Is it, has it gotten too boring? Okay, we can remove that one at the end. I think that will 
fix that first thing that I noticed with the spacing. So there we go, the spacing is better. Uh, now let's fix this compile error. So built-in var arg methods. Go find that in binding generator or built-in var arg methods. Hmm. Built-in var arg methods. Uh, I guess a variant is including it. Is this a generated file? No, it's not a generated file. It's just kind of thrown in there. Uh, and that doesn't count. That's from the, the... It's all about the host of the show! <laughs> Are you trying to say that I'm not making it interesting? <laughs> that it's boring because I'm not interesting? <laughs> I know that's not what you're trying to say. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I try to... Uh, Make sure that I explain what the thing is that I'm working on, and sometimes I drop pictures, to, like make it understandable. But then, like, is just the thing boring? Is programming just boring? No, I don't know. I, I'm too self-conscious. I think maybe everybody is too self-conscious, but especially, no, maybe not especially me. But I am very self-conscious. Uh, okay, so let's compile this and see what happens. All right, errors. I love errors. It gives us something to do. All right, so we have to forward declare some stuff. Or include some stuff. So it looks like std array is a problem. Um, I'm pretty sure we have to forward declare variant. So there is a question of how do we do this? Uh, we want the includes to be at the top. But we won't know that there's a method like this until we get to the bottom. Yeti Fox, hey, welcome to the stream. How many platforms am I streaming on? Uh, quite a few. Uh, Steam, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, might be it. I used to also stream on Twitter uh, until I gave up Twitter. Uh, which I'm a little bit, a bunch of people did actually watch it there. So it's kind of disappointing. But like there was a thing that Elon Musk did. And I was just like, no, I'm done. <laughs> so I stopped streaming on, tweet, on, on uh, Twitter. The other day I got curious about soft floats and learned that G++ has an option for it. Does Godot use G++? Uh, so Godot can be built with a whole bunch of different compilers. Uh, G++, Clang. MSVC, probably others, but those are the main ones. Um, so yeah, you you could do that. My understanding is that GCC's soft floats are intended for embedded systems that don't have floats. So they might not really work the way that you would want them to. Because uh, I'm assuming you're asking about this to implement like deterministic physics in a network multiplayer game. Um, th there's a whole lot more that goes into making uh, things deterministic. I mean, there's gameplay aspects to it, which I'm not going to talk about right now. But like uh, with making the the actual like math deterministic, uh, you have to ensure that things happen in a, a particular order. Um, I mean, it, as far as if you're like imagining, like I can just take Godot compile it with GCC with this flag enabled and have that automatically make physics deterministic. It, it just wouldn't. Um, but uh, uh, I don't know. It, it's worth experimenting with in, in some way to just kind of see how it works. <laughs> uh, upgrade says 3D rollback would be very entertaining. Yeah, maybe. We could... We could do something like that. It would have to be physics list because I don't have a solution for deterministic 3D physics. Um, we could mess around with that sometime. That could be fun. Creating is never boring, says Elliot. In an ideal world, yes. Please, says Upgrade. <laughs> well, we're not doing it today. That is for sure. <laughs> I want to make a little bit of headway on this stuff. Um, but I'll think about it. I'll think about it. 
uh, we are going to be, or, or I'm going to be, I don't know if I'll do it on stream, but I'm going to be at some point soon uh, porting the uh, rollback add-on to Godot 4. Uh, I think I am actually going to port the GD script version. Uh, I do have long-term plans to port that add-on to C++, um, but I, I just want to get something out there because people are, are really asking me like uh, every other day for when they're going to be able to use the rollback add-on on Godot 4. And I think I could get the GD script port done pretty quickly, like a week or two. Um, whereas like porting it to C++ and kind of rethinking how it should work coming from C++ and like trying to tackle some of the bigger performance issues, which is the whole reason I want to port it to C++, uh, would take, you know, months rather than weeks. Um, no channel points or cheers here on Twitch. Uh, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Uh, when someone subscribes on Twitch, I get a little bring noise, and then I usually say thank you. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't know. I'm I'm not I'm not Twitch connected enough to know to know what that is. Uh, please, please, uh, Jacobson forty two, educate me. And I'm also going to go on a limb and assume that the forty two is a Douglas Adams reference. Probably, maybe. Uh, all right, what was I doing? I was looking at compiler errors. That's what I was doing. Okay, so we need to get, uh, yeah, so we need to forward declare variant, and we need to include array, but at the top of the file somehow. Streamlabs? I'm not, Streamlabs, is that like a, like a, like a streaming tool for Twitch? I'm not using such, such tool. I was reading this article from Gaffron Games about floating point determinism that relates to rollback for RTS and fighting games, and I'm way more confused than I was before. <laughs> well, so uh, floating points aren't necessarily not deterministic. Um, if your game runs on one platform using one build and you enable the right compiler flags, floats themselves will be deterministic. That isn't the whole story for making a physics engine deterministic, but like that can be solved that way. Uh, when you decide that you're going to go cross-platform, uh, which means you know you're you're dealing with different math libraries, different actual hardware, which might do its actual like hardware handling of floating point math differently, uh, and probably different compilers, because um, like you know you can't compile. Um, some platforms without using a, a specific compiler for that platform, although GCC is on a lot of things, um, then you get into into problems with hardware floating point numbers, which is why people go to things like soft floats or fixed point. Um, so I don't know exactly what uh, Gaffron Games was saying in in that article, but it's there's a, there's a, there's a lot of uh, 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 ins and outs. There's um, it's nuanced. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, subscribe? That's like, you subscribe the thing where you get notified, or is that the thing where you like pay people money, or I don't know. But yeah, the Discord, come hang out on Discord. That's like the primary uh, center of uh, the Snowpack Games community, such that it is. Twitch lets you accrue points while watching to spend on little interactives and buy cheer points to send and support streamers. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, Twitch is a platform I'm not super deep in. Uh, Twitch seems fine, but like, uh, I don't know. I'm just more connected to what's going on on YouTube and, and the YouTube platform. Um, yeah, that would be, I, I, I might take a look at that and see, see how that works. Uh, the IEEE floats. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you can, you can enable, uh, uh, the you can tell your compiler to do like the IEEE float uh, mode, which is supported on most hardware compatibly most of the time. I think at this point in 2023, it's just going to be like fringe, outdated hardware that's going to implement the IEEE floats badly or wrong. Um, but they are going to be slower, so that's something to to keep in mind. Um, determinism almost always is slower. 
uh, for different reasons. But um, the the sort of native processor's way of doing floats will be faster than putting the processor in the IEEE mode. Um, there's also uh, you have to disable like the fast math optimizations because that will reorder math operations to make them faster. Uh, but order is super, super, super important to determinism. So the programmer needs to be in full control of the exact order that everything is happening, including like the order of different math operations, even if the compiler thinks the end result will be the same. Um, anyway, there is the, the, uh, trying to make the compiler and the hardware do things the way you want approach. And uh, some people take that approach. I think that's the approach of the Rapier physics engine. They, they say they're deterministic cross-platform. I think that they did it this way by trying to make sure they had all the right flags and all the right places uh, to, to get things working that way. Um, I don't know. Every approach has its, has its, uh, its upsides and downsides. Okay, back to to the to the hacking at hand. Although that's not to say like don't keep commenting on this topic because that's fine. I'll, I'm I'm just gonna work on this for a little while. <laughs> you guys can can uh, uh, throw any in anything you want in there, and I'll I'll respond at at my next at my next breaking point. This built in. Something of our args built in class. Jeez, what the heck is the name of the method? Uh, diff. Generate built in class var arg method. Okay, generate built in class var arg method and we want to go up here okay so what i'm thinking is we're going to need to loop through all the methods and determine is there a var arg method in here and if so we're going to have to stick a uh include way up at the top and it looks like it might work that way anyway At what point does it start actually generating code? Okay, so up here is where we do the includes. Great. Uh, but then we enter the namespace right there. So we're going to have to... going to have to do it up here. Um... So we'll make like a has varg methods flag. We'll set it to false. Let's go steal our loop from down here. Uh, where's our loop? Here's our loop. Bring that back up to the top and modify it a little bit. Uh, here we go. Has varg methods, if methods loop over the methods if method is var arg and we say has var arg methods true and break and then we say if has var arg methods then we are going to add some includes we're going to copy and paste this line just for expediency and include array all right, so that should solve one of our problems. Um, and is there a spacing thing I need to worry about here? Probably. Uh, 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 uh. Miha says, Jolt achieves cross-platform determinism in a similar matter by being very specific with its compiler flags on a specific set of compilers' platforms, like turning off fast math and floating point contractions and whatnot. And also, you'd have to ship your own math library, too, because uh, you can't use the system math library to do, like, cosine, sine, all that stuff. You'd have to, because they're all different on every single platform, right? So you don't have to ship your own math library uh, that does all of the basic uh, uh, math that your physics engine needs to do. 
So I know it's uh there's there's at least three main ways <laughs> to try and get deterministic decimal math uh in a physics engine and uh I don't know that one is necessarily universally better than another. Uh it depends on which trade-offs you're willing to take. Um in, in SG Physics 2D, we went with fixed point math, I think largely because I'm just familiar with fixed point math. I've done fixed point math in a number of different contexts over the years. And I was just like, yeah, let's just do that. Um, in retrospect, if I were to like start all over from the beginning, I'm not sure that I would choose it again. I mean, it's fine and it's working and we've solved all the hard problems related to fixed point math already. So because I have it and I'm not starting over, like I'm not, I'm not changing. Um, but I think like if I were to do 3D, I would probably go with soft floats. I just don't like the the I, I'm okay, so the hardware method is probably the fastest. So it has that advantage. Uh, but it's the one where you have the least control. And I think that's what personally bothers me. Like I want to I want to have tight control over everything, not being like battling this platform for this and that platform for that. Uh, I want to write my code and know that it's going to run the same everywhere, which is an advantage of, uh, you know, the the fixed point or soft floats. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we need to add this include, and should I do this loop higher up? Because we're going to need to do this again uh, when we're forward declaring stuff. Uh, okay, so I'll say if has varg methods, we need to forward declare. Oh, actually, you know what? We could just add it to this list, this list of used classes. Uh, we'll say used classes. Uh, append variant. Will that work? All right, let's try this again. What are our errors now? Godot class is incomplete. Hmm. So I was worried about that. The thing is, the Godot code base somehow gets away with it. No variant is incomplete. Yeah. How does the Godot code base handle this? Which was my same question to the contributor. Um, so if we go look at callable.h. Uh, we forward declare variant. And then where are our templates? Okay, so bind is an example of a template here, uh, which returns a callable, so that's fine. Uh, I guess call, call v returns a variant. Hmm. It's possible that the contributor is right, and this is the better way to do it. Um, Okay, here is a situation, no, because it's not returning variant. This one's returning variant, but it's not a template. It's not defined here. What are all these methods that we're doing? We're doing... Callable HPP. We're doing so the one that that's problematic is call because it returns a variant. The rest I think are fine. Possibly. 
Well, so here oh, we create a variant. It's an array of variants. How is this looking good though again? Um, this one we have not an array, but a, a uh, like not an STD array class. It's like just a plain C array, which maybe it gets away with it because it's a C array. And why not use a C array? Because we know the length. We could use a C array, maybe should use a C array. Then we would be able to get rid of that uh, include STD array, but we still have this one where it's returning variant. How the heck do we do that? Uh, and what was the other what was the other method um it was in signal hpp so this this pr is adding yeah this one could probably be made to work also um cuz it doesn't have to return it these std arrays could be turned into c arrays but we still have that one very problematic method. So Hang on, signal, that's also in the variant directory. I think I'm actually like leaning towards saying the contributor might 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 have the right approach. Like it's weird having these be declared in a single header later. And George didn't like it either. Oh, we already had variant as one of the classes here. And signal, did we already have it there too? We already had it for declared on signal. Yeah, we can't we can't have a return type that's incomplete. Um, we can get around a lot of these by um, having the things be pointers or uh, references, but we can't have the return type being complete, at least not in any way that I that I'm can think of. Um, let's Google it. Forward declare return type incomplete. See if this person's having the same issue. Using forward collection, you can do by canonically, if you like, it's not big as you cannot reference members in complete type. So, you have to, because I'm probably doing something wrong. Yeah, I don't know if this is the same sort of situation. I just want to see does my return type need. Yes, it, it probably does, but is there a way around it? Is there a way around it? Finding our calling function that returns by value does require the type definition. Does anyone have a trick though? What is your trick? Do you have a trick? I think there might be a trick. Not there might not be a trick.
<laughs> yeah, it might be that all of these could work except for that one. Bastian mentioned XR meeting. What are these about? Is it more of a community chat showcase or an XR roadmap report? Uh, so uh, it's just the XR team meeting. Uh, a number of the teams, the XR team, the GDScript team, uh, GD extension team, soon to be the physics team, uh, probably even more the production team uh, have team meetings. And so it's kind of whatever the team decides them to be. Uh, let me try and find the notes um, of the 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 uh, XRT meeting. I need to get the right platform open here. Let's go over to Rocket Chat. Where are you, Rocket Chat? Oh, oh. Uh, Rocket Chat put itself over here. I guess I'll have to go sneak it off of here back to. Dr -dr 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 -dr. Uh, here, maybe? Hmm, where are the notes? Where are the notes? I think they're in Drive. I'm going to go search in Drive. But they might also be on, uh, like, the Software Conservancy's pad, in which case I'm going to need to find the link. No, they appear to be on Drive. Okay. Um, I'll put them over on the screen. So uh, there's an agenda. People add things to it. Um, it looks like... Oh, interesting. So, and I'll discuss future of AR kit. Uh, pe people put things on the agenda beforehand. We take notes after the fact about what we discussed. Uh, usually it involves some amount of reviewing PRs and issues. Um, but yeah, advancing uh, the state of Godot and XR are all the things that the team uh, sets out to do. This is the time for the team or anyone who wants to talk to the team uh, to get together and have a voice call as opposed to, you know, normally everything's over Rocket Chat or uh, GitHub issues and PRs and that kind of stuff. But that's basically that's basically what that's about. Oswald Weiss, welcome to the stream. Just wanted to pop in and say it's awesome to see what you're doing. I'm currently a senior SWE at an enterprise company. I'm moving way into game dev. Cool. That's awesome. Uh, your channel's been super helpful. And I'm glad my channel's been helpful. Thank you so much for stopping by and saying hi. But yeah, um, the time zone stuff is wacky. Uh, Bastian's in Australia, so it's hard to find um, times that overlap with Australia and America and Europe. Uh, the time that we have right now uh, overlaps pretty good with Australia and the Americas. Uh, I think probably because uh, Fresia is in the west coast of the United States and I'm in the central time zone in the United States. And so like if we're uh, uh, you know, XR team members, it kind of lines up that way. Although Malcolm is also on the XR team and he's in, I think, the UK. So I don't know. There's just no winning with time zones. Time zones are the absolute worst. But uh, yeah, I invite you to come to the XR meeting sometime that you happen to be awake at whatever ungodly hour that is for you. <laughs> so I guess if you're uh, if you're Central European time, I think it'd be 3 a.m. I think that's 3 a.m. for you, unfortunately. <laughs> but if it happens, if it happens. Um, all right. So, I don't know, guys. I think... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a branch... Uh, commit my changes just in case uh, I want to come back to them some other time. But I think this is a dead end. I, I cannot think of a way around this um, return value because we, we, we have to forward declare variant because variant depends on callable, right? So we can't have callable also include variant. We'll get into a circular 
uh, dependency situation there. Um, so that's why we have to forward declare variant, but we can't actually implement the function if it returns variant because it's only forward declared. Unless, unless you guys know a trick. Do you guys know a trick to make this work? Hey, Alexier, welcome to the stream. Uh, Alexier, you are with the sailor hat and a white beard. You are, you are a, 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 a sea dog, a sailor. Am I correct in assuming that this PR would let you avoid having to use call V in favor of call? Yes. To invoke the various callbacks that are part of the physics server interface. Physics server interface. I'm not entirely sure about that part of it. Uh, I'm currently forced to do some very questionable caching in Godot Jolt in order to avoid the overhead of allocating the argument array with every invocation. Getting rid of that would be a boon. Um, so I'm not sure about how this relates to the physics server, but this is specifically for callables. So you would no longer have to use call V on callables. Uh, you'd be able to just do call. Are the, are the callbacks callables in this case? Um, if, if they are, then yes. Uh, but if this is some other situation, uh, then no. Ahoy! <laughs> um, okay, let's do what I said I was going to do while I wait for the response. Say, um, attempt at putting template implementation in same header as class. And I'll push that up to my git uh, fork. Oh, they're all callable. So yes, yes, this would. That absolutely would, would help in that situation. IT Rooster, welcome to the stream. You are also a white bearded fellow. And in your in your icon, of course. I, I have no idea in real life if you are either bearded or a fellow. Uh, okay, so let me go back. Um, and we will write a comment here. Uh, I just attempted to um, Modify this PR to put the template implementations in the same header file as their classes. So callable HPP and signal HPP. Um, uh, it was able to work for all methods except for callable, or uh, I was able to get it to was able to get it to work for all methods except callable call because it returns a variant. And I uh, I'm not aware of a way to. Uh, Work around that. Work around the the problem that return types need to be or can't be can't be forward declared. Um. So I think. What is the answer here, though? Okay, so I was I was about to write. I think this is like the best way to go, or something like that. But I'm trying to think like what it, what is the problem that people encounter? Right? They will include callable.hpp, Try to call call. Try to call the call method, and it will say there's no implementation, and then they will need to know that they need to include this other random header file and i know that the contributor 
um, added an include for it at the bottom of variant. Ah. So if you include variant HPP, you're cool. But if you include callable HPP, you are not cool. It's not going to work. Um, you have to know about this other extra header file. I'm not sure what the best solution is still. I guess I, I see the problem now. So that's something. Uh, is this where I was writing my comment? Where the heck was I writing my comment? Uh-oh. Did, uh, did I kill my comment? OK, here we go. <sighs> yeah, I guess I understand the problem. Because it it the it, it already depends on it. So um the uh where is my VS code? Um so uh callable needs to be able to return a variant, so it needs the full definition of variant, right? But variant HPP um needs the definition of callable, or it should actually. Why am I not seeing it here? Built-in types, is it included indirectly in built-in types? Yes. OK, so variant needs the definition of callable for sure, 100%, non-negotiable. Um, because callables can be included inside of a variant. It needs to do a whole bunch of stuff with them. Um, so then callable is just forward declaring variant. Ignore that there's two of them. That was a mistake I made. Um, but then still needs to be able to return a variant here. And it's fine to, to, to declare that method, but to actually implement it, the compiler is going to yell at us and say that this needs to be a complete type. Well, OK, so pragma once. Uh, that doesn't jive with Godot's coding standards. I mean, maybe we could, um, Maybe we could uh, say, well, it's Godot CPP. It's not Godot. <laughs> but uh, Godot's coding standards do not include using pragma once. Um, we, we do the, the header guards, these guys. <laughs> and again, I think the way that Godot works around this problem is by just not having a call method that returns a variant. It just doesn't have one. Um, at least I don't see it. Call deferred. It has call deferred, but that doesn't return anything. It's void. It has bind. Yeah, it just doesn't have a it in in uh the Godot engine itself it doesn't have this problem because it doesn't have a call a call uh function. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain that I understand the problem. And then we'll have to figure out in a bigger group what the actual way forward is. Um at the Godot code, it doesn't have this problem because it doesn't have a callable call method, only callable call V and P, uh, call P, and I think call V, right? Call V. Yeah, call P and call V. Uh, 
So completely defining variants can wait until later. <sighs> um, this PR does uh, does include the new header it creates at the end of a uh, variant HPP. So if a developer includes variant, um, then they're good. But I'm worried about developers that include only callable HPP or signal HPP, um, then try to call callable and uh, it won't be obvious to them that they need to include the built-in, what was it called? Built-in var arg methods. The built-in var arg methods HPP header. Uh, probably worth discussing again at a GD extension meeting. I don't think it's reasonable to expect other users to know about this other import, yeah. Maybe at the top of the header file, there should be a comment explaining the problem and that there's a fix in progress. We could probably just update the error message to say include. Well, how how would we how would we update that error message? Because the error message is going to be that this function has no implementation. That the function was declared but not implemented, um, and they're going to need to know that the implementation lives in in this file. But how could we tell them that? I just I just don't know. Um, one option, um, maybe we could include all the methods, maybe we could include the, the definition of all the methods except for callable call in their respective and then try to call actually uh, we'll say any of the var arg methods any of the var arg methods and it won't be obvious to them that they need to include the built-in var arg methods HPP header maybe we, we could include the definition of all the methods except for in their respective header files um, that way, the problem is only. That way, uh, the problem only comes up for callable call, um, but not, uh, we'll say, signal emit, for example. Then they're wrong there. Grammar correction. Then they're good. But I'm worried about developers that include only callable HPP or single HPP and then try to call any of the var arg methods. And it won't be obvious to them that they need to include the built-in var arg methods header. Maybe we could include all the definitions 
we, we conclude the definitions of all the methods except for callable call in their respective header files. That way the only, but not signal mint, probably worth discussing again at a GD extension meeting. I think that's, that's the best I can do. I can explain that I understand the problem here. Um, yeah. Scott Jacobson, Will Nations just confirmed the struct would pass by value. Yes! Awesome. As I recall, Godot's integers should be 64-bit to begin with. Uh, if the Godot build you're executing... No, so it, the, the, it's vector 2i. Um, so so uh, an integer inside a variant is 64 bits already. Yes. But uh, vector 2i stores two 32-bit integers. Uh, is this Godot's code? Vector 2i. Uh, it stores two 32-bit integers, which is the exact same problem as the single versus double precision thing, uh, because a float is 32 bits, so a vector 2 has two floats, and when you compile with double precision, then it has two doubles. And the reason it's the same problem is that these are 32-bit to keep the size of a variant to 20 bytes. Um, Switching them to doubles, I think, makes them 36 bytes or something like that. I can't remember the exact numbers. Uh, but it, it is the same problem, but not for just an integer. It's for the integers that are inside of uh, vector 2i. I hope that clarifies things. Uh, OK, so I'm going to make this comment. And I guess I'm going to add it to, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to add some things to the GD extension meeting. Hmm, that's a good point. That's a good point. You should put that on the issue. <laughs> you should put that on the PR. Here, I'll throw the, I'll throw the, the link down here. Um, because yeah, if if any if any class in in uh, 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 so if you're using GD extension, you're going to be defining new objects, and if you're going to do that, you're going to need to include object HPP, and if that includes variant HPP, then maybe this is all fine. Um, so yeah, that's a good point. Put it on the PR, and uh, maybe. Uh, we'll be able to get this resolved in any case. Uh, okay. I, what was I going to do? I was going to put all of these things that I want to discuss at the next GD extension meeting onto the GD extension meeting agenda. And maybe it'll get resolved before then, but what did this happen? I hit paste, but nothing pasted. Could an if indef an error? That's an interesting idea. If indef an error. Well, that would allow us to make callable. That would allow us to make including callable HPP cause an error if you don't, if you include it only on its own, right? But it won't, it won't be very targeted. So like, we don't know that someone's trying to use call. Maybe they don't want to use call. They just want to like, I don't know, do something else. And now we're saying like, hey, you have to include this header file. But that's an interesting thought. I will I will noodle on that. No worries, IT Rooster. Thanks for stopping by and chatting. Get this one in here. Why is it not pasting? Where why is paste? Why is paste gone awry? There we go. Paste has returned.
And there was another one that I wanted to put on here, uh, which I remember seeing in my notes. What was that? Oh, it was the um, the char string implementation. Uh, so full char string implementation. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, awesome. You're going to make that comment. Thank you so much. Again, I'm reading the comments out of order, but... Okay, so we have got... 25 more minutes till the end of the stream. What can we get up to in that time? Uh, well, let's take a peek at uh, my list here. And so what was this one about making alternative implementation of class TV? Oh, this is another similar thing where like, I think it should be done a different way and the contributor disagrees and then I was like, oh, I'm just going to make an example of what I think it should be. But this is too big. This is too big to do in 25 minutes. Um, oh, yeah. So the, the main point of contention here is I want uh, to allow GD extensions to call these methods exactly the same way as you would as a Godot module. So, okay, so there's uh, a, a bunch of methods on class DB that we don't have access to in Godot CPP. This contributor made a way to access them, but the way that you have to call them is different than you would call them if you're writing a Godot module. And it is my opinion uh, that Godot CPP should work as closely as possible to uh, a Godot module so that you could take code that was a Godot module, turn it into a GD extension, or vice versa very, very easily. Um, and this would break that illusion by making these, these uh, methods have to be called in a different way. I don't want to work on that right now, though. Uh, what else did I have? I had the string resize and some tests. I don't really feel like doing tests. I think I might be going for the string resize here. So, I think... Uh, 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 the, the problem here is uh, GD extension interacts with the Godot API primarily through ClassDB. ClassDB is like you, all of the objects and classes and stuff in Godot are registered in ClassDB. That's how uh, GDScript calls those methods. That's how C Sharp calls those methods. And it's also how GD extension calls them. Um, there are some methods on objects that are only accessible from C++ uh, that aren't registered in ClassDB, uh, usually because those methods don't make sense outside of C++. And string resize is one of those cases uh, because um, the only place that it makes sense is where you can directly access the pointer that points to the string data. Uh, in in GD script, it doesn't make sense to resize a string because, okay, you've resized it, but how do you put data in there? You would put data in the normal way by adding a string to another string, so why did you resize it in the first place? Like, it doesn't make sense. But in C++ land, you can resize a string, then get a pointer to the underlying string data and do something with it, uh, which and, and change it, actually, uh, which is what uh, the use case for this is in the uh, text server advanced. So... Bruvsg has the uh, all of the uh, text handling stuff in Godot core in a bunch of different uh, Godot modules, uh, but it is possible to compile the text server advanced Godot module also as a GD extension, um, which I don't know if this is actually like the right thing. I don't know that this should be a feature that we have, honestly. Like, it's kind of saying like, uh, uh, well, of course. Uh, European languages are built in by default, but if you want to have, uh, you know, Arabic and and uh, Asian languages and all this stuff, well, you need this this add-on. So, like, maybe it's a bad idea in general, but I do think that uh, we should be able to do everything that you can do from a from a module, and you can do this from a module. Um, so, let's make it happen. 
I think we're going to implement it by adding a new um, a new uh, uh, function to uh, the GD extension interface. Uh, those functions are only for GD extension. They are not in class DB, so this is something that we would be able to add, but still not expose something to GD script or C sharp that they shouldn't have access to. Uh, because I think we, I mean, we do get direct pointer access to the string, right? I guess I should verify that. Let's go look at the string class in um, Godot CPP. Uh, what I'm looking for is the w pointer function. Do we even have it? How do you access the? Okay, we do pointer w. I just did it backwards. Um, it's pointer w, and that, uh, yep, through this GD extension interface function, we're able to get right access to the underlying pointer. So all we need to do is add a similar uh, GD extension method uh, on the Godot side that lets us resize it, integrate it into Godot CPP, and we're golden. So first let's get a new branch going for Godot CPP. Uh, how am I two commits ahead of... Oh, okay, cool. Um, missed some commits that, that just happened today. Um, so we'll make a new branch, string resize. Oops, resize resive. That's not a that's not a word. Re resize. Get B. We'll delete that string resize. Or D uh, branch D. Okay. Um. And I guess we have to start in Godot land, so let's let's go back here, make a new branch here, which will be GD extension string resize. And the first thing we need to do is add a new method to GD extension interface dot h. Uh, where are all the string methods? Here we go, some string new with Latin 1, new, 2 UTF-8, 2 UTF-32, operator, blah, blah, blah. All right, uh, so at the end of the list of the string functions, we will add a new one. Hey, Wukash, welcome to the stream. Is there an easy way to implement WebGPU to Godot? This is, is this somehow connected to GD extension? It is not connected to GD extension. Uh, there is a contributor working on WebGPU uh, support for Godot. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head who it is or, or if the PR is public, but I do know that there's someone working on this. Um, we can maybe Google it a little bit. Um, otherwise, like if you come over to Rocket Chat and see, uh, ask around there, I'm sure someone there can point you to the contributor that's working on it. Um, but WebGPU uh, is pretty young at this point, and um, there's a certain amount of not just implementing it in Godot, but also waiting for the ecosystem around it to to mature. Uh, but yeah, it would really have to be in Godot core itself. It's not something that could be done from a GD extension, at least not yet, for two reasons. Uh, reason number one, GD extensions don't work uh, in HTML5. Uh, that's, that's a solvable problem. Um, GD native did work in HTML5 in Godot 3, uh, but somebody has to do the work to allow GD extensions to work in HTML5 and Godot 4. I don't think anyone's working on that, honestly. Um, and then the other reason is it is not yet possible to add a new renderer to Godot from GD extension. Again, it's a solvable issue. Uh, someone just has to do the work to make that possible. Uh, but as of right now, as far as I know, the only way to add a new renderer to Godot is by making a Godot module. So that's something that's compiled into Godot. 
Uh, but it, someone is making that module somewhere. I just can't remember who it is or if their work is uh, public yet or not. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this will be string resize, we'll call our new method. Or function, I guess these are all functions, not methods. It's going to come in Godot 4.2, assuming this gets merged. Say, um, resizes the underlying string data to the given number of characters. Yeah, no problem, Mukash. Thanks for coming by. I'm I'm very interested in getting WebGPU eventually uh, with WebXR because I'm the maintainer of the WebXR module in Godot. Um, there isn't currently any browser that supports WebGPU with WebXR yet, but there is a proposal um, in the Immersive Web Group, which is the web group that maintains the WebXR standards. Um, and uh, uh, eventually a browser is going to implement it. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be really awesome to be able to uh, to have access to those lower level APIs. All right, so we'll call this uh, string resize, and this is going to be an int of some kind. Let's go look up what the type of this is in Godot, and also what types are we generally using here. Um, when we ask for a string's length, do we ask for a string's length? OK, p max write length, so gd extension int. That looks like the type we're using here. I'm not sure exactly which type that is, but gd extension int. Probably a uh, int 64t, but let's find out. In 64T, beautiful. Uh, how compatible is that with what string actually uses? Let's just check that. All right, so, oh, that's char string. Let's get past char string. We want to have normal strings, normal strings. OK, so they use an int, which on a 64-bit machine, sorry for yawning, uh, would be a uh, a uh, in 64t. Woe to those who have 32-bit machines. All right, so this is our declaration, and we now need to provide implementation for it which we put this right below this wacky method here. Let's uh, copy paste this so we can easily find it here. I feel like that should have pasted. There we go. <laughs> Did I accidentally like paste it into the document somewhere? Hmm. Copy and paste is working weird today. All right, so static void gd extension string uh, da, da, what do we call it? Just string resize. I am receiving a knock at my door. Please hold. All right, sorry about that. We're actually 
so close to the end of the stream, but my wife was knocking on my door and I needed to, uh, to go see what she needed. GD extension string pointer p self GD extension int p length. I forgot GD extension wasn't compatible with HTML5 exports. Is that hard to solve? I don't know. Um, so Fabio was the one who implemented. GD native working with HTML5 for Godot 3, and it came relatively late, uh, and I didn't look at the implementation. But I mean, the fact that we can do it in Godot 3 uh, leads me to believe that we absolutely can do it in Godot 4, uh, but I don't know the details. I don't know the details of how it was solved. Hey, Logan! <laughs> Thanks for popping in to say hello. How have things been by you, man? It's been a little while since we've uh, chatted. Rocking a crown and a big, a big uh, brown beard, a bushy brown beard on our icon overlay here. All right, so this method should be super, super simple. Just need to do self resize, and I guess there's an error that can be returned by this. So we should probably return that error somehow um we go take a peek at the not here code here but not the right place string range char string come on i just want normal strings give me the normal strings why am i not seeing it Okay, string. You can call resize here with an error, and it comes from cow data. So, what is this error? Uh, if the parameter is invalid, if we're out of memory, out of memory, out of memory. All right, so it's an important error. We need to return that error. <laughs> So there's been a chain has moved to Madison. Ah, oh, cool. Congrats on, on getting down to Madison. Last time I talked to you, you were just telling me about planning to do that. Now it's done. That's awesome. I've been busy working on editing that four devs, one art pack video I told you about a while back. How was the in-person Godot sprint? Uh, it was it was cool. Um, it was very different than I was expecting it would be. And I think probably the time could have been spent more efficiently as far as like actually getting productive things done but it was so cool to be able to uh meet all those people in person um loads of godot community people who i have not yet met i met in valencia at the godot sprint and uh yeah it was awesome it was awesome all right so we got to figure out how to return this error we should uh uh before i get totally Distracted, Logan. We should we should play some more some more mini golf sometime and uh, and catch up. <laughs> Upgrade says time to hit the hay in this part of the world. All right, man. Have a good night. Let me get back to what I was doing. And I'm very excited to see that that video too. Dear four devs, one art pack. Okay, I'm gonna try and think about one thing at a time here. I'm, I'm bouncing all over the place, as I tend to do. Uh, all right. So this needs to not return void. It needs to return an error. How are we returning errors in the GD extension interface otherwise? Let's see. Yeah, we, we, we got to. There's so many cool new mini golf courses. I think we did space last time, but there's there's lots of cool stuff in there. and. Yeah, got to catch up. Call error. Hmm, do we not have anything that returns like a normal like Godot error integer, Godot error enum, whatever that thing is? Call error. Hmm. So we have the variant types enum defined. 
We have the variant operations. We have call errors. Hmm. I wonder if we should just return like a bool success or not success. In in Godot CPP, do we have the error num? Like we were gonna play RL. What is RL? I've forgotten. I've forgotten what we were gonna play. <laughs> oh, Rocket League, probably. Uh, Cause yeah, I remember I was talking about uh, uh, that I was playing Rocket League at some pr period of time. When my, my daughters get into and out of being interested in Rocket League, I sometimes spend lots of time playing it when they're into it. Um, all right, what was I doing? I was trying to see if the error num is somewhere in GD extension in Godot CPP. Hmm. Let's do this kind of search. Or I'm in Godot. I'm, or no, this is Godot CPP. Defs. Her. Okay, that's not what I wanted. Uh, call where do I see? Global constants. Here we go. Okay. Um. This must be auto-generated, right? It must be. Yeah, this file is generated. OK. So I'm going to say we don't need this in, um, in the GD extension interface header because we have it in the, um, the extension api.json file. Uh, so yeah, let's just return an integer and then let's compile this and see if it compiles. And then that's probably gonna have to be the end of the stream. Uh, because I gotta go, I gotta go for my, my, my walk. And then I have a work meeting, um, as my usual Friday schedule is. Uh, but this has been, this has been a pretty good stream. We haven't accomplished much, but I feel like the kind of amount that we're accomplishing combined with the good conversation that we're having is a good balance. It was a good one. Also, uh, by you guys, is like the air breathable? <laughs> the air has been various levels of not breathable uh, or breathable mostly, partially. Uh, what is going on? We've had the the um, the, from the Canadian wildfires the uh, smoke taking over down here. So this would be GD extension int uh, return. We'll say error code. Last two days were classified as very unhealthy on the air quality index, but it's better today. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Like, I'm actually a little surprised that it's so bad all the way down in Madison, because uh, that just feels far, far, uh, like far enough south that it would maybe be not as bad. But it's been pretty bad this whole week here. Uh, it's it's better today. Like, I look out the window and it doesn't just look like haze. <laughs> um. Error code uh, signifying if the operation was successful. It's a terrible way to say that, but I just want to write something. All right. So G extension interface CPP or interface CPP. Yep. So we want to return this error value. G extension int. Let's return this. And then we need to register this uh, function as taking that name in the interface 
and I just put it at the end of the strings in the header. So I'll put it at the end of the registrations here. And this should compile. And I'll make a nice little commit message. Allow resizing strings from GD extension. And I probably should have waited to see if it builds before I committed it, but it's fine. It's fine. I can I can amend the commit or whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't want to just sit here and wait for the the compile to end and then say goodbye. Uh, I guess we will we will start our goodbyes now. Thanks everyone for coming to the stream. It was super fun. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Find some breathable air uh, here in the United States. It's uh, Fourth of July weekend. Basically, Fourth of July is on Tuesday, so it's like I don't know. It's a closer weekend. Uh, I'm going to go visit my pa for the weekend for Fourth of July stuff, fireworks and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I should be back next Friday. I think uh, Godot 4.1 should be out by the next time I am streaming. And uh, yeah, let's do let's do something. I don't know. Should we work on the fairy and bees game? Do something totally just fun and playing around, less serious than what we usually do to celebrate the Godot four point one release. I don't know. I think maybe we should do that, but we'll see. <laughs> Thanks everyone for coming. I will see you next time. Bye bye.